Once again, good morning. Good morning. Question for all of us. How many of y'all have ever been lost? This audience is a little more honest than the first ones. I don't know. That's great. That's great. The last one, they were just, no, nah, never been lost. You've been lost. Why were you lost? Were you lost because you did not know the destination? You know, destination is where you're trying to get to. Now think about that. You have to think. Were you lost because you did not know the destination? Or were you lost because you did not know the directions? Which one? Directions. We know where we're trying to get to. It's just we don't know how to get there. Now, unfortunately, many times churches struggle with destination. What are we trying to do? Why are we here? And so we at Clearview, we learn from other churches, we crafted our mission statement. So when you walk in, you can see it in the lobby, it's in the bulletin. Our mission at Clearview is to lead all peoples into a life-changing, ever-growing relationship with Jesus Christ. That's our goal. That's where we're headed. Now, that's just a destination. You need directions on how to get there. What unfortunately happens is many churches even have the destination, the mission statement, they just don't know how to achieve it. And so what ends up happening is a lot of frustration, a lot of apathy, a lot of wrong decisions. I mean, all of these things take place. Now, what does that destination look like in our marriage? As John mentioned a few moments ago, that I need to be more Christ-like to see Christ in the face of our spouses. That is the destination. That's what we're trying to get to. But if you do not have the directions, you won't get there. But what, what's gonna happen? A lot of frustration. I'm going to church, I'm doing Bible studies, I'm, I just don't get it. You see, a lot of knowledge does not mean you have the direction. If I can tell you every king of Judah and Israel, doesn't mean I'm going to necessarily treat Nicole the way I'm supposed to. Y'all get where we are? This conference yesterday was the directions. They were the directions on how to be, how to carry it out, how to deal with problems, how to deal with, uh, and, and not just problems, but how to make a good marriage better. Amen? Good marriage, even greater. Now, once again, we have GPS, so we don't think about directions, but in the Christian life, you need those directions. Let me put a verse on the screen for you. It's from Ephesians chapter 4, verses 11 through 15. Paul says, and he, meaning Christ, himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, and teachers. Various offices. What purpose? For the equipping of the saints for the work of ministry. For the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God. To a perfect man. To the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. What's the destination? To be Christ. To be like Him. What is the process? God has given different people the gifts, the talents to equip you to get there. And then it says, and that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and cared about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. This morning, we're going to have something different. Uh, typically, I get up and I preach, but this morning, you're going to hear a message. Don't misunderstand. You're going to hear a message, but a very different kind of message. You're going to hear uh, about two individuals who have profoundly affected and impacted our lives, and that's Tony and Elisa DiLorenzo. So, without further ado, if you would make your way up here, I'm going to ask Nicole to come as well and join me on the stage. Thank you. Thank you. 
you so much for being here. Oh, thank you. Thank you all for being here this morning. So, do you want to tell the audience, those that were not here yesterday, how we met these wonderful folks? All the way in California? All the way in California. Okay, the story begins uh, summer camp. And we're driving back from summer camp with several parents. And one of these specific parents, Chris Jackson to be exact, I see him in the back. He says, I've been listening to this podcast and I think you might like it. And so he's about to tell me some of the, the titles and he goes, why don't you just look at it? <laughs> and so um, there began our journey with one extraordinary marriage. Well, mine was a little bit more specific. She started listening to them. And then one day we were headed towards Virginia because, you know, the laws over there are different. And somebody had asked me to do a wedding in on the other side of the border. And it's a commonwealth, so I can't just go over there and say, oh, I'm a pastor ordained. I can, no, you've got to have a special license. So we're on our way to get this license. And she says, hey, I want you to listen to this podcast. I thought it a podcast. It's on marriage. I said, no. <laughs> no, I, I, I do plenty of counseling every week. Uh, I preach series on, I preach them plenty of those. Uh, last thing I want to do is, is listen to somebody telling us how to have a good marriage. He said, no, just listen for a few minutes. If you don't like it, we'll listen to something else. And we began to listen. And we didn't know when we got to the courthouse, had no clue how we got there, we walked in, I bet the clerks thought we were drunk or high, because we were just like, kind of catatonic state, just looking at them, like, yeah, you want to do a wedding? Yes, sir. Okay, sign here, okay, see you. Got in the truck, and I said, turn, turn that podcast back on. Because it had so impacted our lives, and, and we said, wow, we need to listen to this. So every week, date night, or date day, as we travel, we listen to you guys, and happened for four and a half some years now. We're honored, we're yeah, honored to totally. be a part of your marriage and a part of your marriage journey. That means so much to us. And it's not just us. There's a lot of people we passed along to, and they've been listening to it, and it has impacted their marriage. So, for the benefit of those who've never heard their podcast, what does it sound like when it opens? From San Diego, California, this is the One Extraordinary Marriage Show. We're being busy is overdone. Romancing is fun, and scheduling sex has taken the guesswork out of wondering when you're going to get some. I'm going to go over your and I'm my beautiful wife, Elisa. From coast to coast and around the world, thank you for joining us. It's time to talk sex, love, and commitment. Give us a call on the Hug Hotline at 858-876-5663, or send us an email to hugs at oneextraordinarymarriage.com. How do you not keep listening to me? Come on now. I don't need to wonder when you're going to get some anymore. <laughs> so, we said, okay, it's time. And, and not just Chris Jackson and Renee, but also Jason and Lana were also impacted in this. And we got to get this couple over here. So that's why you guys are here today. Now, your podcast, it's huge. I mean, it is 150 some countries. Yes, yes. Millions of downloads. Yes. They're so humble that they can't even talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> tell us a little bit about it. What, what is it doing? So I know, but tell our folks. Share. Okay, so we started, the, we started the podcast nine years ago, and we started it faithfully as a, as a hobby. And as the years have gone on, we've grown tremendously to the point now where just last week we hit over 10 million downloads worldwide that we've had an impact in, in lives. And we just keep going out there, sharing our lives, sharing what we have seen happen in, in ours and others around uh, to share about marriage, yeah. So, tell us a little bit about the foundation. I know on our podcast we talked about it. We have a podcast as well at Clearview. What is the premise, the foundation from which you build everything you guys do? Everything comes back to Jesus. It starts and ends with Jesus. We've been followers of Jesus for years now. We weren't when we first got married. That was a part of our evolution as a couple. But everything that we do, we do to bring glory. Mm. It's, I shared in the first service that the night before the conference, so Friday night, you know, we're in bed and I couldn't sleep. I actually didn't sleep the entire night. 
and I didn't sleep. Which wasn't fun for me. I know, but you sounded like you were sleeping, so I didn't actually feel bothered by it. You could still do breathing. Uh, But that night, I just prayed. I just prayed for every couple, and I prayed for the weather, yay for sun. We did bring one day of sun. You did? Yes. Uh, Just knowing that there was such a covering, knowing that all of our friends back in San Diego were praying, there was just such... The fact that I couldn't sleep didn't even bother me. I mean, you guys, some of you even said last night, like, how do you have so much energy? I'm like, that's all Holy Spirit. Amen. Because it definitely wasn't sleep. Yeah, we're, we're sold out for Jesus. And yet, when we started, I remember God just being, speaking to me specifically and saying, you're a seed. Mm-hmm. And touching 150 countries around the world, not all of them are like the U.S., our amazing country that we live in. So we're that seed. We get to drop into people's lives, no matter if they're here in the States, Australia, Chile, Iran, Iraq, Egypt, the the continent of Europe. But God spoke to me, be that seed. And so through that, we, we have an amazing way of just being able to weave the love of Christ through our message, the way we, we, we speak to each other and the way we, we built and cultivated the, the one family. How did it begin? Would you mind sharing with the folks who are here? How did this journey start? Well, it started with a really awkward conversation in our bedroom late at night. We were getting ready to lead a small group at our church. And Tony is the big idea guy. Those of you that haven't met him, uh, he is the big idea guy in our marriage. And the small group was going to be on sex, which was a little ironic because we weren't actually having any very regularly. That was intentional on my part to lead a small group on it so we could progress towards that. He was helpful. And uh, we were watching this television clip about a couple, two couples that had done these long sex challenges and Tony Ever, the big idea guy, says, what if we, you know, it's about eight weeks, that's close to 60 days, what if we did 60 days of sex? And I don't actually think he even finished the X before I was like, absolutely not. No, 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 no. Kids were two and five at the time. We were really living as roommates. And the next day, actually I left out a part. I went and put on like one of those fabulous green avocado masks just in case he thought he was gonna get any that night. The next day though, um, Jesus met me in my garage with a basket full of laundry and said, "Um, if you're not willing to try, your marriage will be over. He's not asking for anything crazy. He just wants to be your priority. And there was a part of me that was like, really Jesus right now with the laundry? Like, this is where you're meeting me? But I knew that there was a lot of truth in those words because for a long time I hadn't tried in my marriage. And uh, he came home and I said yes. And I looked at her and I said yes to what? Being the big idea guy, I had no idea where she was talking about because I was on to the next big idea to hopefully engage my wife again. And so we started our journey to the 60 Days of Sex Challenge. We set up some parameters that would work for us in our marriage. It so happened that we ended up finishing 40 out of those 60 days. And it wasn't just about the physical act we began to learn. And this is where it all started. We, it wasn't just the physical act, but it was the emotional intimacy, that communication that we once had. After 11 years of marriage that had been lost, we began to seek that again. And we would, we would actually even be in prayer again over our marriage for the first time that I can ever remember. So it was, it was an amazing, amazing adventure. So I'm going to change the track here a little bit. So what are some of the most common struggles that you both hear about from your listeners? I think um, there's a lot of rejection in marriage, um, a lot of disconnect when it comes to the emotional intimacy, a lot of a lot of ways that husbands and wives say no to each other, sometimes using those two letters, but a lot of times just in the actions that they take, and it, it creates this ever-growing disconnect. And, and like you were saying, Pastor, you know, sometimes we need the directions. And our world is not teaching couples how to have marriage and how to do it well, how to finish well, to borrow a phrase from you. And so that, for me, I see a lot of the emotional disconnect and a lot of the, the rejection. Yeah, and I mean, I think a lot of struggles are the struggles that Elisa and I have faced over the years. You know, debt, uh, financial intimacy, really being able to talk about our finances together. And what does that look like? What is our destination as a couple? What, what, what's the legacy we want to leave? Uh, maybe loss, 
we, we lost a child at 18 weeks and that, that was devastating to each of us. Um, we, we've seen loss of kids, we've seen loss of partners, of family members. There's also addiction. I came into our marriage with a pornography addiction that I, I started, I was 12 years old and it took me to the age of 30 to finally break that bondage. So it, those are real struggles that we see and we've gone through ourselves. And what, what I like about Tony and Elisa is I don't have the courage or that gift to be able to talk the way they do. I, I, you're not going to hear that. We can, we can delve into the mysteries of the Trinity any day, but uh, you're not going to hear other stuff. But when, when, when we were listening, it was not crass, it was not awkward, it was not, let me see how I can make you uncomfortable listening to this. But it was honest, it was real, and it was where I was struggling with when I was counseling people in my office. Because they're asking me questions and I'm going, what do you want me to say? <laughs> I'm not going to talk about that, you know. And, but now I was able to say, no, go listen to this podcast because they cover this on this and this number. Go listen to it. And they will be honest. They won't hide it. They will tell you like it is. And then you can make that decision. And thank you for your courage. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and it's needed in the church. And, and let me say this before Nicole asks the second question. When people in the church circles don't get their questions answered, they don't stop asking the questions. They go to a very trusted source called the internet. I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> They go to the internet and they find. And, and yes, there are some great resources out there. Praise God for that. But most of the time what they find is this junk. And it leads them down another path of problems and frustrations and sin. So, thank you for the courage. You're welcome. Yeah, really, I appreciate that. So, what has been your biggest encouragement since starting your podcast? Oh, those hugs we get. So we get tons of emails that come in from the one family. And the one family are folks like, we got a couple right here in the front row. That's the one family. Jeremy's been listening for eight years. And so we'll get hugged. The Shaws have sent in a, a hug. It, th those are ways for us to be encouraged. When we hear that the message that we share, it comes in. And, and somebody may say something to the extent of, I was searching, I was searching. I was about to walk out the door and yet I wasn't ready to go. So I started searching and I found your podcast. And I listened to one show that, one episode that really caught my attention. So I listened to that one and then I listened to another and then I listened to another. And before you know it, they're, they're like, you know, in the first week I listened to 60 of them. I don't know how they listened to us that long. I would turn myself off at that point. <laughs> And it goes on to go, my marriage has been completely transformed. I've been transformed. I'm excited again. I see hope. There's a destination for my marriage once again, and I have a purpose of what I'm doing here in my marriage. Those are the encouragements that we get from folks that are just, they're amazing. I was telling Pastor Shaw before service started is that we do uh, a sh an episode every week. Elisa does the show notes, and she'll drop in the hugs. I read all, I read the entire show notes. I see what's going on, what we're going to talk about. I don't read the hugs. Many a times she'll read them and I'll be behind my microphone, tears welling up, coming down my face because it's truly amazing to see the power of God just work through our microphones, getting into somebody's ear, touching their heart, their spirit, and the lives that are changed. It's truly a blessing. And for me, it's, um, it's the couples sending us a message like we got last week as we were preparing for the conference that said, I gave my husband until he turned 30. And if he didn't, you know, turn things around, we were getting a divorce. And this picture that attached to the message 
was a picture of a couple obviously having some kind of celebratory dinner. And the message said, this is his 30th birthday, and we've taken divorce off the table. We're, we're, we're going to do this thing called marriage. And there's, there's an expression that Tony ends every show with, and those of you that are listeners, you probably know what it is. Anybody? Anybody? Love you guys? When we get a love you guys back in a message, that right there just lets us know that the family is growing. I mean, when you look around an audience like this, you don't know people, um, and I don't know everybody who's here as well, but what if a couple is struggling right now today, this Sunday morning? What would you talk to them? What would you say to them? Well, first of all, if you have kids, you probably have already been struggling this morning because trying to get to church on time with kids, you might feel like you're losing your Christianity in the, in the driveway, right? I mean, we've all been there. We've got two of our own, two teenagers, so there are days. Um, if you're in that spot and you're in this house, don't quit. Don't quit. What we have seen since we have been here and we landed on Thursday night is that this house does family well. And so if you're in that spot where you're wondering or you're thinking, you know what, maybe this marriage thing isn't going to work for us, reach out, get help, don't do it by yourself. The enemy would like nothing more than to isolate you and to say, you know what, you're the only one going through this problem. No one else knows and we're not going to tell anyone and we're just going to have it be our little secret. It's just going to make you miserable. What we've seen with every single person that we've come into contact with is that this is a family. And family doesn't do life by itself. So reach out and get help. Anything, Tony? Start listening to the podcast. <laughs> re re really, start. You're not alone. You're not the only one going through what you're going through. We have 469 episodes right now. 470 will drop on Tuesday. We probably are able to talk somewhere in some way into your life and into your marriage. And maybe that's what you just need to hear right now. You need to hear another couple or somebody else in the one family who has gone through what you've gone through and know that you're not alone. I mean, we hear miracle stories of couples who've gone through infertility, struggling, struggling, and then listen to the show and lo and behold, they, they've released the stress. They heard somebody else and somebody else in the one family who had gone through IVF and nothing happened. And then lo and behold, they did a seven days of sex challenge. They got pregnant. Another couple, there's hope there, but you need to, you need to go after it. You got to seek it and listen to it. Absolutely. And, and the one reason we did this in service today is because what we have done is we've done a great disservice to our young people. Uh, our children, our grandchildren, what we've told them is, uh, if you want to know about spiritual stuff, go to church. But things about, you know, talk about intimacy, sexual intimacy, those kind of things, that's not for us to talk about. So what do our young people do? They go to their friends, they go to the internet, and, and you would agree with me that things are much harder for kids today than it was for us growing up. It is, it's just a different world. Sin is still the sin but the problems are, are far closer. But when, when we have this kind of discussion, what we're telling them is it is safe. In your family, you should be able to talk about those things. Make place for that. In fact, yesterday, our older two girls were in the seminar the whole day, and they were loving it. They, they took notes, whatever, one day they'll come to use. Our two younger boys would have loved to be here for the intimacy section, but um, that's not true, sorry. <laughs> but they were helping out with the kids ministry, but we, we want that culture to be, and that began by listening to the podcast. We were able to talk about things, and it's become quite funny in the house, too, so. Yeah, and we, we talk to our kids. We have a 13 and a 16-year-old, so we're right in the heat of it, and we have just opened up with them and sharing with them. What, what does a godly marriage look like? And we, we instill that and we continue to talk about it because there's so much after their attention. There's so much going after their attention that we want to make sure that they understand that we're here for them, that we're here to, to talk through these topics with them. And sometimes really, you know, they're just like, Dad, Mom, that's just gross. <laughs> it's okay, I got it. 
And yet, when you're in a marriage, you're going to see the beauty that's going to come from all this. In fact, um, we got a question that just came. It said, why is it important for me to remain abstinent until marriage? I actually coach a lot of folks who didn't make that choice. And the weight that comes from having sexual partners outside of marriage, it, it, it becomes a burden. There's a lot of comparison that goes on. There's a lot of shame. There's a lot of guilt. And making the choice to remain abstinent actually gives you freedom. You know, a lot of people think, well, abstinence, that's like putting more rules on. I'm like, oh, one more rule I gotta follow. But really, it gives you the freedom to do marriage the way God intended. Free from any baggage, from any previous hurts, from any of that, to just say, you know what? This is how we're gonna do life. With God at the center, because that choice for absence is really about choosing to put God at the center of your relationship and then to grow as a couple around that. Okay, well now you've written several books, so can you tell us a little about a little about each one, please? You brought a lot of books and most of them are about And what happened very many left? <laughs> take them, take them, buy them. Oh, let's go. Alright, our first book. Strip down, 13 keys to unlocking intimacy in your marriage. So when, when Elisa and I first started this, every time we said intimacy, people just said, oh, sex. And at first, that's what I, I thought, too. I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, sex. But as we began to grow and learn more, we really realized that there are more forms of intimacy than just the sexual intimacy. There's your emotional intimacy, your financial intimacy, your recreational intimacy, spiritual, intellectual. And so, Strip Down was our first book that we wrote in a he said, she said manner, so that you get to hear from my side of the view and Elisa's view on each one of those intimacies. And at the end of it, we have questions that you can ask and answer each other. A lot of folks have used this in a small group setting because it really starts to open up. Because we, all, we, we tend to look at marriage from one point of view and only that view. And, and yes, talking about the sexual side of it is fun and it's like, yeah, that's what gets us a lot of listeners. And uh, honestly, I love using that because it, it, it draws somebody in. And yet from there, we can share. When financial intimacy, when you're not on the same page financially, when we are 50,000 plus in debt, you better believe that was a, a struggle in our marriage. So then our second book, uh, which is not here because it got picked up quite a bit yesterday, is uh, Connect Like You Did When You First Met, 101 Proven Questions for Couples. And that came about because there were times in our marriage where you know the only conversation was, did you bring home the milk? And yet, this was- Do any of you have that conversation? Show of hands? Yeah. We do yeah. have an honest crowd here. I think you're right. Okay. The, the 11 o'clock's a little more awake than yeah. the 8.30. But this was the same, guy. so I was having that conversation with the same guy that when we first started dating, I could talk to you for four hours, five hours on the phone, and I would oh, think yes, nothing of it. We just talked, talked, and now I'm, you know, we're reduced to, did you bring home the milk? Or don't forget, Alex has practice. And so we realized as we were starting to rebuild our marriage that we needed to be able to have conversations again. And, and we just started asking each other questions. And what we came to realize is that couples need those questions handy so that they don't have to think about them. Like, we want to make it easy for you. So that's where that book came from. And that book is called Connect Like You Did When You First Met 101 Proven Questions for Couples. <coughs> our third book is The Seven Days of Sex Challenge. And lo and behold, it has become our number one bestseller on Amazon, and it's pretty much straight to the point, but we help you along. <laughs> because it sounds easy, and yet it can be pretty hard. Elisa, did, Elisa and I did our 60 Days of Sex Challenge, that was 11 years ago, and we wanted, to keep, we wanted to keep it being intentional in our marriage, but we knew we couldn't do that year after year. That would be a little tough on both of us. And so we came up with the seven days, and we've done this 10 years in a row, and we have seen, honestly, marriages transformed by this book. And it's, it's a quick read. You guys can read it before, after, during, whatever you want to do. But it's one of those that Maybe is Maybe not during. Quick. I'd like you focused. Maybe not during. I'd like you focused. <laughs> Our fourth book gets a little heavier, and that book is called The Trust Factor. So we realized as we began to work with so many couples that trust had been broken. It could be from little white lies that were said over and over. It could be bigger, bigger items from physical affairs, emotional affairs, addictions that were hidden. And we realized that the trust has to be rebuilt. 
So we can all be, in, or the two of you could be connected in each one of the intimacies. So with that book, we, we dive deep. We get, we get really raw and we just want to build that foundation. So that way you guys can build up from there. And our last book that we've written, although there's another one in the works, you guys I'm sure will be first to know uh, once we release that one. But yeah, we'll have to get them an early advance copy. We will. We will most definitely do That's that. That's what we'll do. That, that fifth book is entitled Call to Love, Experiencing Your Best Marriage Through the Words of Jesus. And that is actually a journey through Jesus' words in the Gospels and how they relate to marriage. You know, so often... You know, the words go up on a Sunday, and we're like, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I've been in church my life, and, you know, okay, there's that scripture. But to actually take the words of Jesus and see how they apply to marriage. It all started with um, reading the story of the Good Samaritan, right? One person walks by, second person walks by, and it wasn't until the third person. And in that story, when I, when I was sitting there and I said, I think I've been the first two persons more than I would like to admit in my marriage to Tony. I think there have been lots of times when he's been hurting or when he's needed me. And I've just been like, you know what? Dude, that's your problem. I'm, I'm not touching that. I don't want to get involved. That's going to get messy. And when I realized that I was not called, when I said yes to be persons one or two, I was called to be the one to pick him up and carry him in those seasons, that's when I knew I had to go back and look at the words of Jesus and see just what he was saying about marriage. It's beautiful. And other than the podcasts and, and writing books, you also do coaching, correct? Yeah, the coaching was kind of an unexpected journey in that when we first started recording, recording the podcast, we would get those emails, right? And people would say, oh, you know, we want a marriage like you and Tony. We want to, how do we do that? How do we do that? And we'd, and we'd write an email back and they you know, actually sent us another email about two months later, saying, so we want a marriage like you and Tony, we're having these problems. And, and what we realized was that we needed to take these strategies. Instead of people going to Google, we needed to be that resource, and we needed to, to create a way to equip husbands and wives to do that. And that's, I went and became a certified coach, and now take all the strategies that you'll hear on the podcast or you read about in the books, but apply them individually to what's going on in a particular marriage. And Thanks to, thanks to the internet, which like you, you know, said earlier, can be both a blessing and a curse. Um, the blessing is that it doesn't matter where folks are around the world. I have um, coached with Muslim second wives in Egypt. I have coached with Catholics in Ireland. I have coached in Africa, um, all from our offices in San Diego. Uh, so that, that's the blessing and being able to, God allowing us to speak into people's lives around the world. And again, I want to thank you for what you guys do. Because, you know, the family unit is so important. It's important for the church. It's important for our community. It's important for our nation, our culture. As goes the family, so goes the world. And you guys, God has called in this season, in this generation, to restore. And, and thank you for what you've done. It's our pleasure. Absolutely. And thank you for coming to Clearview. I can't say that enough. It's been a blessing, both to Nicole and I and to people here. And thank you this morning for willing to stand up here and uh, talk to us again. You're thank very you. Well. Thank, thank you thank for you. having us. Thank you, guys. This morning, we're not going to have an invitation time, but I do invite you to bow your heads for a few moments. I believe, and I believe many of you do the same, that the Holy Spirit is in charge, that God has brought people here for a reason. You came this morning because there was something God wanted you to hear. Maybe you are that marriage that is struggling. No one knows about it. And this morning, God is speaking to you. He said those words, don't wait. Maybe you're in that marriage that feels like all's good, but it's, it's only in your perspective. The other person doesn't feel that way. And you feel like if you mess things up, you lose control and it'll fall apart and you got this all trained and worked out. But God brought you here this morning to give you a wake-up call. 
that you do not have it in the control. That what needs to happen is for you to relinquish that control, give it back to God, and let Him do what He needs to do in your life. And it may seem tough to, to break that pattern that what you have said and how you talk to your spouse and how you do things and how they respond. And, but today, take it and give it to the Lord. And say, God, take over. And do what you need to do, not in her life or his life, do it in my life. Change me. Work in me. Maybe your perspective on marriage has been tarnished because of what you experienced, or what you saw growing up. And what you heard this morning is that doesn't have to be. That if you let God come into your life, you follow His directions, that God can bring and will bring beauty through ashes. But you have to surrender to Him. You have to give it to Him. It's a very simple prayer that says, God, take over. I need your help. I refuse to live in bitterness. I refuse to live in resentment and unforgiveness. I give it to you. Please help. Very simple prayer. Please help. And there are some here this morning who do not have God in their lives. You've never received Christ as your Savior, as your Lord. Do that right now. Simple. Acknowledge that you are a sinner. That Jesus came to die for you. He came to take your sins upon himself so that you don't have to suffer. You don't have to take God's wrath. How about right this moment, telling God, thank you for Jesus Christ. I acknowledge I'm a sinner. I need him to come into my life. Forgive me of my sins and take over. And then thank him for saving you. And Father, we pray this morning. Some are praying today, God, that, that you would transform their world, their marriage, restore that relationship. There are others praying to ask Christ to come into their lives. God, save them. And there are others here, Lord, who are burdened for someone in their life. Their children, their grandchildren. Maybe they're siblings. Maybe a neighbor or a co-worker who's struggling. God, we lift up those names to you now. We pray, God, whatever it takes that you would begin to work in those lives. Help us, God, to reach out to them. To bring hope to them. To bring joy through Jesus Christ. To bring godly wisdom. And to do it in grace and compassion. God, we lift those names to you now. Again, God, we thank you. We thank you for Tony. We thank you for Elisa. For their commitment. For their vulnerability. Their courage to speak. Their convictions. God, we pray that you would bless them mightily. Use them, God, to keep building your kingdom. We thank you. We praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Let everyone say.